All right, so I'm gonna warn you guys ahead of time. I'm just gonna to talk to the cameras. I got them both set up, hoping to film everything that I need to tell you guys about this. This is what I'm calling the greatest drill press table you've never seen. And I can say that because I've never seen one like it either. This is an all new design. It's not the same copy and paste as everybody else. Um, I know when you see aluminum T-Track, you think, oh great, another drill press table. This one is actually way different. The only thing that you need to know, because I did shoot the build on this, and then it dawned on me, you guys don't need to see me route grooves in plywood. The only thing you really need to know is all the dimensions, where each one of these tracks line up and how it relates to the fences. Yes, fences, there's two. This is a split fence design, or at least that's what I'm calling it because it's the only one like it that I know of. Um, and that's what you need to know is just where everything's at. How big is this hole? Where is it at? So I made drawings for you guys is what I'm trying to say. And there's a link to those down in the description. So this, might not check all the boxes for you. It does for me. If it does for you, you can go check out those dimensions there and bring those out to the shop and kind of tweak them to fit what you need to do. All right, so criteria going into this was basically two things. One, I wanted the full capacity of my drill press back because with the traditional fence, you lose a whole bunch of real estate here. And then the other thing is, is I wanted no way for anything to interfere with the chuck or my hand in the handle right here. I wanted this side to basically be empty. The only way to accomplish both those things is to have a split fence. This split fence can go all the way back to right here. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could actually use this fence all the way back here. at full capacity. So for me, it's I think eight and three sixteenths from the top of the post here to the center of the drill bit. I can actually put a piece of material in here, say I got a great big piece here, and I can drive this all the way across here wherever I need to at full capacity. I have not seen a table yet that would do that. It's not very often that I need full capacity, but it's nice that I was able to try and figure it out. Now I know with a normal system, a single fence, you can take the fence off and you can set it aside. I don't wanna do that. I want everything to stay here. So one problem with having the router table built into the table saw is that if I need the full capacity of my table saw for the saw, I have to take the router table fence off and I have to put it somewhere. I didn't wanna do that with this. I want everything to live right here. The other thing is, is that you can't use a fence at full capacity if you take it off the table. Right? So this is pretty cool. Split fence, full capacity, still being able to use our fence, or if anything else, it tucks it out of the way. So if I have some interesting oddball thing up here, I wanna put on the press, I have the option now. As far as everything getting in the way, nothing gets in the way. So we've accomplished both things. I can bring this forward and I can slide it all the way over here. My, handle, my hand is not going to get in the way. Now I know what you're probably thinking is, is it possible to have such a short fence? Absolutely, because I have material support the whole way through. With this all the way over to the right, I still have about two inches or so right here of material support. So if I drive this through here, I have support all the way through here. And if I don't, remember, that's what the secondary fence is for. If I feel like the piece that I'm drilling into is a little too awkward or the, you know, not easy to manage. I just bring the fence in here. Now I have a full fence. It's, it's pretty easy. If I'm close now though, and I'm worried that the chuck is gonna hit this, well, once again, let me just slide this down and get it out of the way. So the chuck will never interfere, the handle or my hand for that matter, will never interfere on this side. Now the problem with taking away a, a full fence on this half is the issue of a stop block because normally you could have a stop block here and a stop block down here. This is really beneficial for when you're having a start and stop point say on a mortise and you wanna hog out all the material of a mortise first. What this can work as, if we take this slot instead, is now this becomes a stop block. So if I set it here, down, down, now I have a stop block with two points of contact. This maxed out is 11 inches roughly from the center of my bit over to the end of my plywood. But if I needed more than that, I can trade these two out and get this all the way down here at the edge. And it's about 13 inches. I took a scrap piece of maple out of the hardwood box, drilled a couple holes in it to put the T, uh, T bolts on. And now we just slide this on here. Again, two points of contact. 
So now if I need this stop block here, I just slide my material in and there we go. The T-slot on the front has special dimensions and those special dimensions are in the drawings for you guys. This slot will fit track clamps. More importantly, it'll fit the Bessie track clamps. It'll also fit the dovetail clamps. However, they only go in until it hits the heel. They fit in there perfect until it hits the heel because there's a little flare there. So all you would have to do is widen out this hole just a little bit and these would fit through here too. In fact, if you're on the dovetail system, these could all be dovetails as well if that's easier for you. I used a quarter inch bit and a T-slot cutter. I have no idea why because I have the dovetail system. It's just what made sense, but you could use the dovetail system in there as well. It's a fabulous system, but this will work just fine. And now you can clamp this too here. Two things I don't like about this, screw type clamps. Screw clamps are notorious for backing off if there's any kind of vibrations or anything. If you have an assembly table that has dog holes in it and it's just like one or two plies thick and you use tra track clamps in there, I'm sure that at some point you've been banging on the table and had a clamp loosen up on you. That's what the screw types do. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. These are the exact same clamp as the other Bessie clamp but they ratchet and they will not come loose no matter what you do to them until you ask them to come loose. They're much quicker too. The other thing is, is it's not so close to the table where I can't get my hands in there to twist the handle. So that's actually the reason why I would prefer to use this. The dimensions for that, like I said, they're in the drawings if you guys wanna use that. I just don't know what other clamps will fit in there. As far as I know, I don't have them to compare, but as far as I know, the Bessies and the Festool clamps are identical in their manufacturing and they're borderline identical through here too, but this is the part we're worried about. Um, I don't know, these are the only style that I have in here other than the dovetail ones. I don't know if they'll fit the Makitas, the DeWalt zone and so forth. So that's more of a do it at your own risk. I took the dimensions of all of these little things and transferred it to here. That's how I got them. So if you're running on some certain set and that's what you have, and this design is something you're interested in, I would just measure all those things, do some test cuts on another scrap piece first, make sure it slides in and works before you take it to the main piece. So all this is, if we take these knobs off of here, this is a piece of, I think it's two inches tall and an inch and five eighths wide, uh, riffs on ash. Why ash? Because that's what I had in my shop and I wanted to use solid lumber. It has a groove or a slot, if you will, quarter inch right down the center of it. It goes all the way through. Obviously, that's how we're able to move it here. Um, I know that that can be an intimidating cut for some people, so I want to explain really quick how to use it. Take it to the router table. You have a stop block right here at your start point. You slide it down to your stop point, which again, those start and stop points are on the drawings. You put another stop block right here. So those two stop blocks are just gonna bounce right in between them. Get your fence depth set. We just wanna split the middle of it. We wanna go right down the middle. Once all that's locked in, lower your router vet just below the top of your table. Get this locked in here. Raise the bit, you know, start the machine, raise the bit back up and drill that router bit right up into your material, eighth inch, three sixteenths, whatever it is that you're comfortable with as far as taking off how much material it wants. And then just run that right through here. Then you can slide it back to do a cleanup pass, raise the bit up a little bit more. And you just wanna keep doing that back and forth until you get about halfway through the material. When you're done with that, turn the machine off, flip this end for end. Very important that you flip it end for end. You don't want to flip it this way, right? We don't wanna turn it around this way because that's gonna be the same result. It's very important that we flip it end for end. And that's going to be so that this reference the same face, it doesn't matter if it's front or back, as long as they're the same, the same face is referenced against that fence and you're gonna end up in the exact same spot because if you're off of center by just a little bit, you'll end up with a groove kind of offset to this side and then another groove offset to this side and they won't match and you'll fight it and it won't make sense once you go to put it on here. So, um, route that groove in there. We have a chamfer on this edge for debris and then again, we have the T-slot on the top and the custom T-slot on the side. And that's how we get this. Pretty simple, um, fairly straightforward, although it wasn't for me as the person who was trying to figure it all out on the go. And then the whole thing, of course, just goes on here, a couple of knobs, 
put knobs on here that aren't too wide because if you ever do anything that's taller than the fence, it's gonna bump into the knobs. These knobs are really close. I have to tighten it down and then just turn it kind of like this so that the little cutout is right here in the front or else if it's like this, it'll bump into that. So I might have to find some different knobs for it. All right, I think that's it. You got the split fence system. Again, we can get this one completely out of our way, this way completely out of our way. We can combine them and use them at full capacity here. Um, I put this on a box with a drawer in it. It's about five inches tall. This stuff isn't in the drawings because this is something you can tailor to your own needs, right? If you have a really small table and I tell you to make this box, it might be kind of awkward. Same thing with this table. So you can kind of shrink this stuff up the way that you want. Um, I almost made a box that was the full width, so I had lots of drawers in here. But as is, I've already got empty drawers and stuff that aren't being used for anything, so I don't need any more storage as of right this second. I thought this was good enough. Plus, I used a bunch of scrap to make it. It's kind of janky, but it works. Everything's leveled out now. Um, I have dust collection. The dust collection I'm gonna talk about in another video at some point after I have some more hours with it so I can see how well it works. I think that's it. Thank you for suffering through that with me. Um, again, drawings are down in the description if you need them. Hopefully this solves some issues for someone else. It's definitely solved some issues for me the last couple weeks that I've been using it. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you guys in the next video.